Okay, hello and welcome to the 71st episode of Salt Play Sunless Sea. Um, here we are at Esteval. Uh, really quickly, the Admiralty wants me to go to Port Cecil. Um, I have business with the Navigator at King Eater Castle. The Spies in Khan's Heart need something, but I didn't write down what. Um, the Chronicler wants me to get Glory's Death on History's Beach. Still don't know what that is. Um, there's a bunch of stuff that I need to take to King Eater's Castle. And the, uh, Venturer wants 21 Spider Silk or 7 Approved Romantic Literature or 7 Romantic Literature. I have 2 Approved Romantic Literature and 7 Spider Silk. I did some Spider Silk obtaining last episode, um, but I... I don't think it was actually a good deal. I'm not sure. So. And then the Fathom King wants the Heart of Mount Nomad or the Tree of Ages, a unique and general weapon, uh, sunlight, an officer, and fruit of the eternal tree. Um, but here we are at Estival. Sun, a great beam of sunlight bathes the island. Squint into the dazzle. Far above, there's a hole in the roof. In that light, you see beaches of white gold sand, trees heavy with bright fruit, the reds and blues and greens of the surface. Let's hmm, go beachcombing. If you're lucky, you might pick up treasures. More likely, you'll pick up bits of wood and the occasional interesting arthropod. As if the occasional interesting arthropod isn't a treasure. Um, driftwood, something glinting, or a nasty glob of glue, of goo. Let's go with something glinting. Just bottle glass? Just bottle glass. But here's a message in the bottle, a page from a journal. The writer has described a debauched afternoon in thrilling detail. Who threw this in the Z? Was it some botched attempt at blackmail or a love affair gone sour? And let's compile a port report. Right fast, the light scars. A burning after image. Your eyes water, the pages blur. The report is one of joy-filled complaint. Estival has a beauty too bright to be appreciated. But perhaps the Admiralty can find something of use. All right, and there's not gonna be any shops. Yep. Let's, um, yeah, let's run by Nuncio. It's been a while since I've been to Nuncio. If I had thought far enough ahead to realize that I was going to go to Estival, I would have gotten a mirror catch box, but it's fine. Leave me alone. I don't want to fight you. Nuncio, do not return, sender. Taciturn functionaries walk the docks in the uniforms of postmen. An enormous crowned statue casts a chilling statu a chilling shadow. The shadows gleam with rats' eyes. Their ceaseless chittering rolls like the tide. My ability to read fluently is not good today. I'm out of practice reading aloud. Okay, let's start with assembling a port report. You may not be very familiar with the locals yet, but you can provide a preliminary overview. Okay, so this character hasn't done all of the Nuncio stuff. Okay. Surface details. There's the statue in the middle of the island. That's hard to miss. There's the way everyone wears a uniform, and the way they call each other by their ranks in the postal service. There's the way that the port authorities refer to regulations. There's the jargon, the curious habit of referring to any used-up thing as cancelled, as though the whole world were made of stamps. You write about vestigial bureaucracy and about trappings of order retained far from home. Alright, let's go to the postman's tavern. 
the inky blotter it's called the sign doesn't look like much warmer inside than it looks faces turn in your direction but no one seems surprised to have a new arrival on the island um the inky blotter lit by two roaring fires one at either end of the room the bar one at either end of the room the bar pretender is in postman's uniform like almost all of the patrons a noseless postal inspector called blunt thomas delivers the drinks clears tables stacks the firewood let's start with allow the clattery air to offer her services she could remove the call from a postal worker they wouldn't be a worker anymore of course the hairless postwoman won't hear of it but you do get one taker i miss london he says i'm tired the inside of my mouth tastes like stamp glue blunt thomas gives you a bottle of rum and the use of the basement no amenities but i don't fancy cleaning the blood off a better floor the patient the patient takes off his uniform for the last time and lies on the cold floor no spectators says the clattery air harshly and puts you out of the room she comes out later with a scrap of skin from the patient's chest the patient follows whistling a tune from mahogany hall all right let's see if that progressed anything in talking to her oh i do have secrets okay well let's improve my hearts because i figured out that i that would be useful um interesting well i'm gonna do more nuncio stuff right now actually okay go to the postman's tavern i just read all of that um Ask why the local cur- Let's do this in order, actually. Listen in on postal tall tales. Fishermen brag about fish that got away. Postmen brag about hard deliveries. Amazing what you get for a penny stamp. Delicate bottles lowered down chimneys on a rope. Do not fold under any circumstance letters curled through a narrow slot. Rattling, groaning crates brought back to the same address every day for 22 days running. The windows they pried open, the servants they bribed, the delivery surcharges they paid out of their own salaries just to get rid of one more packet. It's hard to tell which they hate more, the senders of mail or the recipients. Stands to reason, if the message was a welcome one, they'd tell the other fellow in person, reflects the hairless postwoman. All right, let's ask why the local currency consists of rats. Two strings of rats for a pint of ale, three strings for wine, five for the tolerable brandy under the bar. Scarcity is not an issue. The hairless postwoman at the end of the bar smiles mirthlessly, or maybe it's just the lack of eyebrows that does it. Long enough carrying the things around, you get into the habit, she says. Then she tells you that if you stay out late enough, you'll see some of the postmen making a procession to the center of the island, stringing up rats around the statue like yuletide de decorations in prayer to an ancient deity of this place. From the coughing and choking elsewhere in the pub, you'd guess this is a story they often tell to newcomers. Ask about that big statue in the center of the island. Um, you know what? This character, I said, is a dick. Let's ask why the hairless postwoman is hairless. Legacy of some interestingly explosive package, maybe? No, she says. Kurt, not pleased you asked. Still had eyebrows when I came to Nuncio. The postman at the next be bench diverts you, speaks in a low voice. Lots of people find habits when they can't deliver the post anymore. This one has a plucking habit. Best learn not to notice. You glance up. The hairless postwoman is still glare glaring at you. All right. That was so rude, but oh well. Ask about the big statue in the center of the island. If there was a guidebook for visitors, it would have to be the first entry. The monumental postman. Oh, that? It's all of us, isn't it? Sort of the spirit of the island? 
Most of them don't seem troubled for more of an explanation than that, though the hairless postwoman tells you it didn't always look like a fallen London postman at all. It used to have a different face and a more old-fashioned outfit. And then let's ask how they occupy themselves all day. There must be more than this. The dead letter office. Big building, center of town, hard to miss. You can work there too if you want. It's not clear whether this is a generous offer or a threat. All right, back to the docks. Let's explore along the beach. There's a long stretch of shale dotted with washed up kegs and barrels and smaller floatsome. Shifty going, the rocks slip and slither underfoot, but you keep your balance. Um, let's assist the man holding a broom. Both of you together still won't achieve anything, but maybe he'd feel better. Surprisingly soothing. In the long term, what you're doing won't make the slightest bit of difference. Every sodden bit of paper you fling out to sea will come back in a few hours. But for now, you manage to clear a little patch of shore a few feet on each side. The stones are bare, as they should be. Your companion turns his head towards the sound of your work and gives you a little nod. Let's study the odd currents here. The water that brings flotsam ashore does not follow the usual patterns. On all sides, you make a complete circuit of the island. The whole shoreline is alike, all of it covered in debris. All of it washing steadily inland from every direction, not the work of some directional current. It's more as though the whole Untersee were draining into Nuncio, except, of course, that force did not affect your ship when you came this way. It does not stop. It does not stop ships leaving. Evidently, it only works on the post. Mm, I'm gonna try one more time see if I get anything else. Nope. Okay. Um, collect material for the dead letter office. That's where all this floatsum belongs, so it can be sorted. Will of its own, you make your way along the shore with a big sack. Many of the envelopes are too damp to read, their address is permanently lost, but a surprising number are still legible. There are also parcels. Here and there is a crate, a message in a wine bottle, a sealed cask that has bobbed up out of a shipwreck. Your sack ought to get heavy with all these contents, but it pulls upwards and away, straining inland towards the dead letter office like an unmanageable dog. Do I gain another one? Nope. Okay. All right, back to the docks, and let's try a shift at the dead letter office. There is a sign of a cancelled stamp over the door. Extensive tour. Blunt Thomas takes you around the office, a small collection room where those retrieving letters may state their business, a much larger set of back offices where newly arrived letters and parcels are collected and sorted, a dank, briny smell that never goes away, presumably because so many of the parcels spent time in the water before they arrived here. In the back room is a machine manned, ratted, by a postal rat, a ratus faber in a pinstriped hat. It shovels sludge-damp letters into the machine's hopper, and they come out dried, cleaned, pressed, and sorted into the slots in, and sorted into slots by size and quality of paper. Uh, one has various possible occupations here. None could be described as fast-paced. Let's start by conversing with a postal rat. Perhaps you'll have some insights on the inhabitants of this island. On the Islanders. Do you like having sticky hands? Asks the postal rat. Most people, they have sticky hands. They can't wait to clean them. Yes? For a postman, an undeliverable parcel is sticky hands. Bothers you till it's fixed. The longer you serve in the post office, the worse it feels. Delivering a letter correctly is good, so not delivering it is bad. The unclean feeling gets too strong and they come here. All right, feed your undeliverable litters into the sorting machine. The gleaming hopper awaits. 
After prolonged whirring, the machine begins to distribute seven invitations edged in gilt into the correspondence of the aristocracy slot, two oversized parcels probably containing books into the books tray, one stamped bronze tablet that drops with a clang into a bin marked First City. The postal rat watches all this with an air of satisfaction. One more time. Okay. Um, let's see about ask the postal rat for a key to the basements. You've worked here long enough now, and you might need one. No trouble at all. He's surprised by the request. Most postmen don't like it down there. No one ever asks for a key, but he'll cut you a new one. Just be careful in there and come out if you start to feel wrong. All right. I would love to do the back rooms this episode. So let's... Mm. You know, if I fight these rats, it'll probably take long enough that I um, get something awaits you. But they're just not getting closer to me. Come on, come this way. You see me. Your AI says, hey, gotta fight that. Yeah, there we go. Come on. Right. You've destroyed a rat barge. The ship is yours. What will you do with her? Lean pickings. A stout crate. Three supplies. Nice. All right. And back to the dead letter office. I know I said I wasn't going to bother with Nuncio this time around, but I really like the dead letter office monologue. So. Let's start by making a study of what goes on in the back room. The machinery looks interesting. Finer distinctions. The postal rat is forever making improvements to the machine, making it more able to distinguish between similar types of package, more sensitive to the age and significance of the contents. The current project requires including, encoding the entire contents of Slow Cake's exceptionals into a drum of punched metal so that the machine will be able to recognize correspondence to or from persons of note and send it into its own proper basket. All right, let's open the back rooms. The key is warm in your pocket. Deep and deeper. You had expected a few shelves of supplies? More files of letters a few years older? No, it is a pit so deep that lantern light does not show the bottom. A spiral walkway descends along its wall, and that spiral opens wider as it goes, as if you were looking through the narrow end of a very large shell. Lighting this wall are shelves and nooks unevenly sized. Some are a few inches square and contain single scro scrolls of papyrus, Others support grates big crates bigger than coffins. They're made of a woody fungus grown to meet requirements. There are no marks of carpentry or any of the postal rat's handiwork. Three turns down the spiral and you feel you can't breathe. You can come back later. Maybe. Um, let's tell the postal rat about your basement findings. It gives you something new to chat about. Troubled, but not surprised. They say that's been here since before we came. 
Before there were Londoners in the Neath, before there was a dead letter office, there was someone else and they built the last layer on top of what was there before and so on. When you press him a little further, he says, I've been down there. Didn't like it much, but I wanted to test my machine. Thought if it could handle some of the very old dead letters, that would be a good sign, you know. Evidence the machine was in working order, good strong sorting categories, and so forth. He pauses. There's letters down there that set your hair on fire if you so much look at the, so much as look at them. See the bald patch on my left leg? That wasn't a machine accident. Oh no. That singed right off as soon as my I put my nose into one of them letters. Um, let's descend into the basement with flame, properly equipped. Candles for the way and a flare for the bottom. Spiral on spiral on spiral. The descent is long and slow. You count the turns at first, but the time comes when you can't see the square of light from the door above and can't mark how far you have come around the spiral. You exhaust one candle after another. At the end, you come to a place where the ramp opens onto a bowl-shaped floor. The cavern must be hundreds of feet wide here. You light your flare, but even that does not show the cavern walls. The floor is carpeted with... At first, you think it is gravel, but no, it is broken shards of clay and stone, all scribbled over in words too old to read. At the center of this space is a needle of deep black rock, glossy as resin, glittering with ice, inscribed with three arcane sigils that hurt to look at. You feel a meaning in their presence, a prohibition or a commandment, that all things must come to their destined place, that what cannot be delivered immediately must be saved against a future date, that a message that goes unheard is a tragedy, that the signal must be carried, no matter how far, no matter through what darkness, no matter whether the sender still lives, nor whether the recipient can even read the language of the writing. The inscription resolves itself and is known to you. No word lost. And that's Nuncio. Climbing out. The climb out is slow and takes a long time. Could you possibly have come down this far? Surely not. Your breath grows ragged and your legs cramp. Let's sit down a moment. The rest of the spiral will still be there after you've got your breath. Visions? Dreams? You relax against a shelf. It isn't comfortable at all, as the edge of a metal box is prodding you between the spine and the shoulder blade, and somewhere off to your right is a sound like hoarse breathing. It doesn't matter. At the dimness you see or remember or dream, a silver tree growing in a courtyard. The reverie lasts only a few heartbeats before you're properly awake again. Let's do that one more time. Yeah, okay, same thing. Ascend. There's no way out but up. At the surface. The dead letter office is still here, its machine still working, its baskets still filling with missed invitations and misplaced wills. Shouldn't it have been blasted away, destroyed by the force of what lies beneath? Tell the postal rat what you saw below. Maybe he will be curious. Without name. You start to explain, but your language doesn't have the right words to express it. The weight of the delivery commandment, the sacred necessity for every word to reach its destination, and the countless individual miscarriages of meaning from one entity to another, which have occurred throughout history and are still occurring, to the detriment of the whole universe. He holds up a paw. Not going to understand it, no matter how much you explain, he says, and I'm glad, as if I did understand, I'd be likely to run mad, working where and as I do. After a moment, he adds, likely you'll forget, at least forget some of it. After all, you never wore the uniform. Then he points out where your hair has singed at the temples, and gives you an ointment he keeps in a drawer. End your shift. Return to the docks. 
Mm, let's try to tell the postal route one more time. Okay. End your shift. Return to the docks. You are finished here for now. Let's go to the postman's tavern one last time before we leave. Let's trade war stories about your shift work. You know how to fit in. Common ground. The parcels you've weighed and entered in logbooks. The things that oozed out of them. The postmen are delighted by your incredulity and shock. A civilian finally understanding the full horror of the post. They have stories even worse than those, let me tell you. Hang on a moment, the po postmaster scritch. We've all heard your rubbery lump story already. It's nothing to the tomb colony pickles. Pickled what is what I want to know. And what about that soothing copper crate and how we had to scrape off the bits of masonry? Do you remember? The night runs late. Um, let's... I have no idea what this will do, so judge the postman in light of what you now know. All have failed. Unhappy by right. Some smile and some laugh and some tell filthy tales, but at rest they'll all return to the same expression. Downturned and bitter, it comes from being insufficient and knowing that they are insufficient and knowing that they will always be insufficient. They were called to a great task, and they could not perform it. All right, let's go back to the docks and check if there's any shops here. I'm not going to buy any of those. And that's that episode. Um, Thank you very much for watching this, the 71st episode of Salt Plays Sunless Sea. I will see you later. Goodbye.